Hello guys, it's Julia here, and today in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to install Windows to a VHDX file and have it bootable on actual hardware. So I found this program called WinNT Setup, which it's funny because this new version just got released yesterday. I don't know if it changed anything, but hopefully it'll be the same. But I'm going to show you guys how to install Windows on a VHDX. Now I find this really useful because it's good for testing operating systems that you're not going to keep long term and just to mess around with. And I find it easier than making a partition because when you have to like go to disk management and all of that, you have to like shrink the drive and like with shrinking it and all that and then have it possibly make more recoveries and stuff like that. So I just find this method a lot easier and I discovered it recently so I thought I'd show it. I actually did this video like a week ago but I didn't like the way it turned out and I thought it was too long so I decided to redo it. So we're going to do Windows 11 in this case which this computer doesn't even support Windows 11 because it has an i5 6th generation and it requires at least an 8th gen CPU with Intel but hey it'll still install so I mean yeah this is actually a way to bypass the requirements which is kind of funny but this will install pretty much anything Windows 7 and up. It can install older versions. I haven't really tried though. I know it has the option. Keep in mind if it's Windows 7, it has to be Ultimate or Enterprise. Otherwise it'll say it doesn't support VHDX booting or VHD booting, and then it'll just not let you log in. So keep that in mind. But 8.1 and up, I have tested. It works perfectly fine, no matter what edition you do. Well, with 8.1, I did Pro. I never did the regular 8.1, but Anyways, we're going to get to the point. So we're going to mount our Windows 11 ISO because I'm gonna do that in this example. On the last video, I was gonna do both 8.1 and 11, but the video ended up being too long, so I didn't do that. So I'm just gonna mount that there, and then we're gonna open WinNT setup, and then I'm gonna open the EXE. It's gonna ask for UAC, so you'll click yes. It'll say it requires some files from the Windows 1080K, so you will need to download those files, so let it download. Yeah, this actually looks the same as the other version, but anyways, you select the location of your install file. So in this case, it'll be our mounted ISO. You could also extract it with 7-zip and do that too, but I decided just to mount it. That's the wrong folder. Sources, it's, it supports install.esd and install.win, so keep that in mind. It'll say Windows 11 Home, which we're going to change that to Pro because we don't want to install Home. So we have our Windows 11 Pro selected there, and then we're gonna create our VHD. So you're gonna go to VHD, you're gonna go to create, you're gonna specify where you wanna store this file, which this is really nice because it's just installing Windows to a file. So I'm going to make a new folder and I'm just gonna call it VHDX because I'm gonna make it a VHDX file instead of a VHD because they're better in my opinion. It says .VHD, but we'll change that. So this will be whatever you wanna name it. This will be the drive label that shows up when you are booted in the operating system. So I'm just gonna do Windows 11 and then I'm gonna make it, because of Windows 11 64 gig requirement, I'm just gonna make it 70 gigs. I'm not gonna keep this anyway. This is just for the video. So then I'm going to choose VHDX because in my opinion, I think it probably will work better since it's newer, I believe. So I just always do VHDX. With 7, you have to do, I think with, if you're running Windows 7, it'll only let you do VHDs. And as far as installing 7, I don't know if it, it has to be a VHD or if it can be a VHDX, I can't remember. But GBT UEFI, because this computer is UEFI, um, if you just do, go to run and type MS Info 32, um, you will see that it'll tell you what mode it is. So if I look here, BIOS mode UEFI. So that's how you can know if your computer's UEFI or legacy is just by checking MS Info 32. Windows, I do not need updates right now. Why is it popping that up? I actually don't know if that's on my actual system or if that's on the video, but I guess we'll see when I'm editing this video if I see that on my screen. Okay. Anyways, so 70 gigs at VHDX and dynamically expanding, yeah, we're going to click OK. And then it's going to say that our VHDX was created, it was mounted, so we're going to click OK. Now you can see our install location is this. Now I don't know if it installs to the EFI on the actual computer or if this is installing on the VHDX. I think it installs to your actual one, I'm pretty sure, when you do this. So. It's fine though, but it also supports other things like patching themes, which I don't really do themes. It can break things. No, I don't want to do VHD again. 
tweaks is pretty nice because you could do some okay what just happened um you could do some tweaks here and there's some other things you can do in the operating system you can have it skip oob if you want you can disable the reserved space which will free up storage because you know how windows likes to save up space for updates i'm actually going to check that because since it's only a 70 gig one i decided just to check that um and there's other options you can do and there's even an option in here which i'm trying to find that it, oh yeah so it does have option for disabling hibernation but you can't do hibernation on booting from vhdx's so there's no really point in doing this because this program can install windows to another partition even it's not just vhdx's that this program can do it can do a lot more than that so anyways i'm going to close this because i did what i wanted to do i usually don't modify anything in there and then i'm going to click setup and then it tells us, you know, where our files are, what it's going to install to. It gives us all the information. Um, X is that um, Windows 11 um, partition. And I think, um, yeah, I think, yeah, it, it mounted to X. So it usually it does like Z or something, but in this case it did X. I think it's because Z is in use on my system. So that's probably why it used X. So anyway, we're going to just hit OK. Um, there's other options you can do in there like automatically restart but in this case I want it to like tell me when I need to restart now some notes while this is installing just for you guys if you're installing Windows 10 to a VHDX you won't be able to do feature updates because you'll, it'll just pull up this error that basically says like w Windows can't be installed to a virtual drive which is kind of strange I think that's what it says well you'll see it on the screen because I'll put a screenshot of it but it says something along those lines I can't remember exactly but it says something basically like that, meaning that you won't be able to do feature updates if you install 10. Now with 11, I don't know if when the next feature update for 11 comes out, if it will work. I have a feeling it will because when I installed Windows 11 to a VHDX on a system, um, well, it was actually Insider and it let me update the Insider build and it didn't seem to complain. So maybe they fixed it maybe in windows 11 it's different but i know in windows 10 if you try and do a feature update it will just basically not work because it'll say that you can't do that on 10. um so just keep that in mind it doesn't let you do feature updates i'm pretty sure unless a newer version of 10 fixed it i'm not entirely sure i'm just going off based on what i've experienced i haven't tested every single version of windows so i don't entirely know but if you guys have have any ideas on that too, you can let me know. But if you install 10, you could do like LTSB or C, which wouldn't get feature updates and would still have support for a while if you want to do that. But I know with the enablement packages with the newer versions of 10 coming out that those will update no problem because it's not like a full on feature update. So those shouldn't have any issues. So you should be fine doing enablement packages. That should work. But you can see it's updating our BCD there, and then it says the stage setup is done after restart the sysprep phase will begin. So I'll reboot the system and it's going to automatically boot into it. Now I'll show you guys afterwards how to remove this. I don't wanna make this video super long like I did with the last video, which is kind of the reason I'm redoing it to be honest, because I felt like I rambled way too much and because I did a time lapse of it actually loading and stuff. But I feel like in this case, I'm probably not going to do that just because it's just the basic Windows setup, really, just like you installed Windows. There's nothing really special about it, but it is really, really easy to remove afterwards. And also, if you guys are wondering about performance, I don't see any performance differences running at the HDX file. I don't know why it says Windows 10 when it's 11. I'm sure you can probably rename the boot entry but it does set it as default but you can go back in ms config and change the default if you want if you want to change it back to your main operating system anyways this is basically just like a normal setup so i'm gonna stop the video and resume it when we get there so you can see that we are finally at the just a moment which is going to basically let you set up windows just like completely normal i did unplug the ethernet cable because i know in the setup it'll try and do microsoft account and stuff like that and there's the logo for Windows 11. Keep in mind, if you do install Windows 11 and you do home, it will force an internet connection and make you sign into your Microsoft account. So if you don't want to do that, install Pro and you shouldn't have to. But I'm going to skip the internet setup because 
I just want to get to a desktop as quick as possible. Oh yeah, you will get the license agreement when you're in this. Um, I'll just name this test because it was a test. And then I'm just trying to basically get through setup as fast as possible. But I really just find this useful for testing or if you just want to make a temporary install and you don't want to have to worry about partitions because deleting a VHDX file is a lot easier than deleting a partition and re-extending it and all that. And also the fact that you don't want it, you know, messing with your main OS drive. For all I know, it might actually create the EFI on the VHDX itself. I'm actually going to check that out. So I'm going to let this load and I'll be back. All right, guys, so we are back at the desktop. I'm actually going to check disk management so I can see actually what it's done here. So if I open disk management, you can see there's our Windows 11 drive and it does actually create an EFI on the VHDX. So it doesn't seem to interfere with anything on your main install, which I find great because it just puts everything in one place without modifying your actual partitions, which is the one thing I really like about this and the fact that there's not much performance difference. Keep in mind, it will use all of the disk space. Like if I go to the VHDX right now, it's using all of the space, like the whole 70 gigs. So whatever you put in for how much space it'll take up, you have to have that much available when you boot it because it will reserve all of it when you're booted in the other operating system. But once you boot back into your main OS, the size will shrink to only the amount it's used. So it will go back down if you boot into the main operating system get again, which we will do. But in my opinion, I think this is really cool because it's just really easy to do. It's just there are there are some limitations to doing VHDX files. Like I said, you can't hibernate. However, you can use sleep. So you can do that as long as you have your drivers, obviously. You do have to have your drivers installed. So if we go to device manager, you will see that we are missing a ton of drivers because it hasn't connected to the internet because I unplugged the internet so that it didn't complain about the Microsoft account stuff. So that's why I pulled it. So you could see, yeah, we don't have like a display driver and I believe you need the display driver for like sleep and things like that to work. So anyway, we're gonna boot back into the main OS and I'm gonna show you guys how easy it is to get rid of this. But if you do want to use this to test Windows Insider, it will update because I did test this on another system and Insider does allow you to do updates, which I think is pretty cool actually because when I did that, I was for sure thinking that it was going to throw up that error message that I got before. But it turns out with Insider, I guess it's a different story. Maybe Microsoft allows it now, but I find it funny that error saying you can't do that, yet it's already running off of a VHDX and yet it says you can't install Windows to it. I, I think that's pretty funny actually. It made me laugh when I first saw it because it was definitely not the error I was expecting. I thought it was gonna be storage related. Um, so we're gonna click on Windows 10 to boot back into our main OS there which it does set the VHDX as default, like I mentioned before. So we will have to, you know, go back and set our Windows 10 back to default. I actually found an easier way to delete it without having to do what I did the last time I recorded this video around a week ago. So that's kind of the reason I'm redoing this video because I found an easier way to do this. So once we're booted back in the main OS, which we're booted back in it, all right, so I was just waiting for it to load, but we're back into the main operating system again. Now note that you actually won't be able to see the VHDX mounted when you're booted into the main operating system because it mounts it when it's, you know, booting. But when you're in the VHDX, you can see every drive. So if I go to Windows and I go to VHDX, you can see it's now only like 10 gigs, well 9.81 gigs. So it did, you know, go, the space did go down because we're not booted into it, like I said. But just be sure that when you do boot it, you have that amount of space you gave it available when you're creating it. So don't make it like a ridiculous amount that you don't have, otherwise it's probably not gonna boot. So anyways, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the run box and you're gonna go to MS config. So MS config, you can do Windows key plus R or you could just right click the start menu and click run and that also gets you to the run box. Or you could just search MS config and it will pop up as well. So we're gonna go to the boot tab and you can see our VHDX is there and it's default. 
but we want to make our main operating system default. So we're going to set that as default. If we reboot now, it would just make our OS default and show the VHDX underneath it. But in this case, we want to delete the VHDX. So we're going to click on it and we're going to click delete. So now it's no longer in our boot entries. So I can apply, okay, exit without restart. And now I can just, you know, right click this and click delete. And then I could empty our recycle bin and hit yes. And now you can see our VHDX is now deleted. We should have our free space back as you can see here. And if I do restart the system, which I'm going to do, you will clearly see that it'll just boot up like completely normal. It's not gonna have a boot selection and it's not gonna do any of that. And we also have our space, like I said. So you could see how easy it is to delete one of these when you're done with it, which is great for just testing operating systems on your computer. But keep in mind, if you do like Windows 7, it's a bit risky, especially if you have UEFI. So I would not do 7 if you have UEFI, unless you have like a UEFI version of 7 or something, because as you know, it's, you know, Windows 7 on, you know, newer computers is a bit more difficult. All right, so we're booted back into the operating system again. And as you can see, everything, you know, is back up to normal. Yeah, that's pretty much how to create VHDX. But as I said, WinNT setup can do more than just that. You can install Windows to partitions and things like that. You can apply tweaks to it. Although be careful what you do. I mean, it should be fine though, but I think it's a really cool program, honestly. I'll leave a link in the description to the form of where I downloaded it, and I just clicked the Mega one. I downloaded it from Mega, but it had another place to download it on there as well, so wherever you want to download it, but I would recommend downloading, you know, the latest version. I sorted it by size, and then I just downloaded it, and then I extracted it with 7-zip. Hopefully I didn't forget anything, but if you have any questions about this, or you guys want me to test something with the VHDXs and you can't, let me know and I will do it, and I'll leave a comment and let you know how it went so well anyways i'm gonna wrap up the video but i'm probably gonna start using this from now on when i need to make a dual boot because since it's a virtual disk file it's easy to delete and i can boot them in vms even if i need to which is awesome but anyways thanks for watching have a great day bye bye for now